Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three talking points. Everton won, Southampton won. The Toffees are out of the Carabao Cup after they lost a penalty shootout by six goals to five. I said on my match reaction, I couldn't really make a case for Everton winning the game. And I, I definitely can't make a case. Southampton dominated the ball. And we... Yes, we had opportunities, of course we did. Yes, Berlinson missed two really presentable opportunities. Well, two good chances, really. He's missed it. Um, but they were the better side. You can't... There's no point trying to like use excuses or trying to dress it up or pass it off as being unlucky. It isn't unlucky. It's not unlucky. We haven't won a game of football this season. And it's it's past the middle of September. It's it's pathetic what we're seeing. Sorry, we have won. We've won one game of football against Doncaster. I apologise. Um, when we've faced Premier League clubs, shall we say that, we haven't won a game of football. and It's pathetic now. It really is. It's pathetic. And everybody at that football club has got to get their heads together. The playing staff, the manager, the coaches have got to get their heads together because this is just not good enough for our club. It really isn't. Let's get rid of the nonsense that... It's a it's a really difficult job and you know there's miracles being performed. They're underperforming all of them at the moment and they need to step it up. We got a huge Premier League game at the weekend. Lose that and I don't know, I honestly don't know where we go from there. And people can people can pass it off as if it's this is an anomaly that we're just on a, a losing streak at the moment. This is six wins from thirty games of football. Absolutely diabolical. In the Premier League, five wins in nine months. It's not good enough. Not good enough for my football club, I'm sorry. If your standards are, are different, that's fine. That's fine, but this is me and I'm, I'm telling you from my heart, this is not good enough. This is not my Everton, what I'm watching right now. 20, what, 4% or something possession at home against a team, a scratch team from a promoted side that have come up and weren't really that bothered tonight and we couldn't get the football off them. That should be terrifying to any Evertonian. For everyone around me tonight, it was they made their feelings very clear uh, how frustrating it is and watching it. And that, that's the first thing I'm going to speak about tonight is our playing style has got to change. It's got to change. It ain't good enough. We don't... How can we not go after a team at Goodison Park in a Carabao Cup game when it do you know what I mean? If we'd have really gone at it, gone after them, knocked it about, really tried to get them on the back foot, put them under pressure. If if we'd have got beat two one because we were but we were so unlucky, we'd had thirty five attempts at goal, crosses, shots and play great football, you'd go one of them nights or whatever. It there was none of that. We can't keep giving up the ball in these games. This tonight is mind, you know, it's mind boggling how they have been. They looked like I've seen Southampton in a few games this season so far. The way they moved the ball around, that was that was a like I said, a much changed team tonight for them. Like all their subs at the weekend were playing things like that, and yet you could tell it was Southampton. They knocked the ball about. They've had over seven hundred passes tonight. Everton as a team had 208 passes and Harwood Bellis, the centre-back, had 150 on his own. Now, am I advocating for us to be played the same way as Southampton? No. We have to take care of the football. It's called football. It's not called who fit long and hope you get something off it. That isn't how you play football. And again, I've said before, there is no way that these players cannot play the kind of football Southampton play tonight. I just don't buy it. They was one side that was coached really well into angles and playing movement, pass it and move into space off the ball, move around the pitch with the ball. And the other team, you can see, is sort of the biggest concentration is shape. There's got to be a hybrid for this manager. He can't rely on us being defensively perfect so we don't make a mistake and hoping we can nick a goal off a corner. We've scored off a, okay, it's a second phase off a corner, isn't it? That can't be the only way Everton score a goal and then you're, you're hoping 
that you don't concede. Well, okay, if he's a set-piece specialist and we've scored off one, then they need to do defensive work because they've scored off one as well. We just haven't defended it. So that's a you know a one in his box for scoring off a corner and then a negative for him for us conceding off a, corner, off a free kick. We've got to develop the way we play. And that is coaching. And it's making sure the players are comfortable on in possession. And it's moving it around. And he's got to find the right combination, even if it means leaving one of your mates out. Because... The football club is suffering. The team is suffering right now. It, it looks like it doesn't know what it's doing. There's no clear identi identity. There's no way of playing other than just kick it long. I mean, more not more evidence than when Jao Virginia in the last half an hour is webbing it up to Illiman and Jai, who is half the size of Beto. And yet we've put him up front and we're still telling our goalkeeper to kick it long. That to me is worrying, and we've it's a it's a trait that we have got to get over. Jamie Carragher said that on Saturday night, this team can play football, can play better football than what it's doing. You can't keep giving the ball away the way we do, because otherwise everything relies on you not conceding a goal. We can see the goal every game, so it that's got to evolve, and it's got to evolve right now. It's got to start right now. Because what they've turned up so far for us has been woeful. And don't forget in the last round against Doncaster, Doncaster passed us off the park in the first half. And the only thing really that changed that game was Irabunum scored via Dwight McNeil's shoelace. Um, that changed the course of that game. We got a little bit of confidence after the goal. And they sort of, they were beaten down a bit. But they're a league two side, but they passed us off the park. We have got to develop the way we play. We've got to do it quickly because we cannot keep saying, you have all the ball and hopefully we'll get a corner. That isn't football in 2024. It just isn't. And we're not very good at it. If it was clean sheets every week and we nick the goal off a set piece every now and again, fair enough, but it isn't. Goals are flying in and we keep giving the opposition the ball all the time and going, you know, we'll see if we can stop you scoring a goal. It's It's not working. It's blatantly not working. Uh, second thing I'll talk about is the club's pricing for tonight, for tonight's game. The last round against Doncaster, there was 37, 38,000, something like that, just under 38. The pricing was really good, 15 for an adult, I think it might have been 10 for an OAP uh, and 5 for juniors. And then for this one, Evan have whacked it all up, 25 quid for an adult, there was 33 thousand or something stop being greedy build up the, the football we're playing at the moment is rubbish so let's not you know it's crap right and people have gone to Doncaster game there was you know games coming up at Goodison Park I get I get building on the fact that and using the fact that a lot of people will will go to these games because it might be the last opportunity, if you're not a season ticket holder, it might be the last opportunity you get to go to a game at Goodison before we move, obviously. But just put it up to 20. You'd have got that at 20 quid, up a fiver. Maybe we would have had 35, 36,000 in the stadium instead of 33. Just give the fans a little bit back. You're still making money, still putting it up. You didn't bank, and I know for a fact you don't budget, because how can you, for more than one cup game at home? You shouldn't budge for any cup games at home because you might be thrown away in both and go out in both. So therefore, Everton have had two cup ties at Goodison Park. The last one nearly sold out. This one, 33,000. Could have been 37, 38,000 maybe if it was cheaper. So this is bonus money coming in. Don't try and squeeze the fans for everything. Yes, try and get a, big, a bigger bit of their wallet share. Absolutely, try to do that. But come on. Jumping from 15 to 25, it's a bit off, I think. I think it's in poor taste, and particularly with what's going on right now. Having to watch what we're watching and the results are not very good either. Come on, give a bit back. Third, let's finish with a positive. Roman Dixon, I gave him man of the match in the match reaction. Does he start for you now at right back? Yes, I know Nathan Patterson's on his way back. Seamus was such and go for... Um, for Villa and, and didn't play, he's not on the bench tonight. I imagine 
he's probably going to be okay for Leicester at the weekend. But should we go with Roman Dixon, Tarkovsky in there alongside him? I know we played at Spurs and we were beaten 4 0, but it wasn't really a fault, in my opinion. It wasn't sort of Dixon's fault why we got beat 4 0. I just think tonight we saw when he breaks out of, the, of defence, that pace takes us right up the pitch. We don't have anyone who does it because there's no pace in the team. There is no pace in this side. No one can run with the ball. So, you know, we, we need to... We go to Leicester at the weekend. We need to give them something to worry about. And if we are going to... And we will because the manager is the way he plays. If we are going to sort of try to sit back deep and hope they don't score, then surely having a right back who can fly with the ball down that right wing will get us up the pitch quicker and therefore put Leicester on the back foot at times. So is it a chance now for the next couple of weeks to just put him in and go, let's see what you're made of? I don't I just look and think he showed me enough tonight when he was running with the ball. He he went he got us three or four corners all night. He made a rash I said it on the match reaction. He made a rash challenge, which which Southampton scored from the free kick. He should have. He got out nice and fast. He should have just held Fraser up. His Fraser was never doing him for pace ever in a million years. Was he beating him for pace? And he's so he's got to be wary of that. And also sometimes he can give the ball away a little bit cheaply. I get it, and I get if Sean Dyke turned around and was like, "We can't trust that." But I just think right now what he offers us, and because the right back situation is all up in the air, it can't be Ashley Young for me. It just simply can't. Seamus. You're terrified because he is he going to get injured this game? He's picked up a few injuries already. Let's get him nurse him fully fit and ready without having to throw him back in. Patterson, let him build up as well. But I think maybe just right now, why not try Dixon for, for Leicester away and see if he can be a weapon for us and just get one of your midfielders to cover? Maybe. Um, it's what we used to do with Shea, a young Seamus. OK, I get it, but, you know, the manager... We'll probably be more cautious than that. But I just think, why not give him a go? He's He's got the one thing we are crying out for in this team, which is pace. Just tell him to fly down that wing and throw balls into the box or, you know, he'll get corners or whatever. Maybe right now, while we're struggling to fill that right-back berth, he just settles on Dixon and gives him a couple of games. Let me know what you think. I think, he, he you know, like I said, I gave him one of the match tonight. I thought he had a good game. He did make, again, I'll hold my hand up. I'm not blind to it. He made a rash challenge with Southampton, scored from the free kick. Should we be conceding goals from free kicks? Not when our manager is a set-piece specialist. No, we shouldn't. Absolutely. It was just a ball into the, the box and the lads headed it in. It was quite basic, really. But yes, he should have stayed on his feet. He got out nice and sharp. He should have just stayed on his feet and held up. Ryan Fraser, he didn't. He, he went to put a tackle in. He's got booked for it and give a free kick away. So I get it. I get that there are flaws in his game. But I just wonder right now, we're needing some spark. We're needing an outball. We're needing some pace in the team. And he brings all of that. It might just give us something. We need something. If we carry on doing what we're doing, we go to Leicester at the weekend and get beat there. Then we are in big trouble. We really are in big trouble. So... There you go. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.